We are not especially against segregation, but we are positively and definitely against the disintegration of our community and our body politic that we cherish above all things, realizing that where our anarchy prevails, none of us has anything of any value and none of us has any freedoms anymore. It is the opinion of this court that desegregation as to high school students in that county should be effected by a definite date and that a reasonable date should be fixed as one not later than the beginning of the fall term of the present year of 1956. Uh, our school starts at the 1st of September, and all through the month of August, of course, we knew we would have Negro students in school with us when we started, but no one said too much about it, and no one seemed uh, opposed to it violently. The majority of the student body had reached the idea that, you know, uh, this is the law of the land, we're going to abide by it. It's just, just that simple. And uh, actually throughout the community, the ministers and the churches and the editor of the town newspaper had more or less presented the situation in that context. And, uh, then, I believe it was the Saturday before the Monday that school started, this Casper came into town and he started calling people up and stopping them on streets and trying to form pickets in front of school for Monday morning. And then Monday morning when we did come to school, we found that there were all oh, 15 to 20 people out there with pickets. When I was in Charlottesville, I saw a little piece in the Charlottesville paper which said that integration was a coming <coughs> in Tennessee. For the first time, the first school, Clinton High School, it happened to be just a day away. And I wanted to find out how the folks felt about it. I didn't think they were for it, but I didn't tell them anything about that. I just went door to door. I showed them a picture of a nigger soldiers kissing some white girls. You've probably all seen that picture. Army in the Fort McClellan, Alabama. Some say it's Germany. It doesn't make any difference. There's still niggers in American Army uniforms kissing white girls. It doesn't make any difference whether it's Germany or Alabama being done is wrong. Now, uh, I showed them the picture and I asked them if they knew about the niggers going into school the next day and they said they knew about it or they heard something about it or they didn't hear about it. Some of them hadn't even heard about it. I asked them how they felt about that and they said, I'm against it. What can we do about it? Nothing we can do about it. So I told them something about picketing and how labor unions operate. I told them to be down at the school the following day, or Monday morning, and I would be there with them and we'd picket and we'd, we'd discuss this thing with the local officials. We'd find out what, if anything, could be done about it. John Casper was a, an eccentric young man, originally from New Jersey, who had set himself up as a, as a bookseller in Greenwich Village in New York. Casper, who had never lived in the South before, uh, moved uh, here just to, to, uh, to push forward the segregationist uh, uh, movement in, in, uh, in, in, in Clinton. Night, we had a mob in Clinton composed of people from Clinton, but the overwhelming majority were people from all over the South who had been drawn here because of the publicity that uh, attended Casper's uh, activities. When he came down, I think if, if the house houses had to stay out of it, uh, we wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been that bad. I don't believe because we were used to it. 
mingling with the, uh, the guys our age, you know, going down playing basketball with them and, and football. We, we walked, we started right here at this Asbury Methodist Church. It was peaceful, long you was up on this hill. When you crossed that railroad track where those cars coming, that's when you had that hostility. Could you imagine a crowd of whites on both sides of the streets down there calling you that, the N-word, and people from all over the, the, the South, out of Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Florida, everywhere coming through it. And then Monday morning, when we started the school, there were only a few people around, and I thought maybe, well, they just here to be curious, and they wanted to see us come in, and that they would leave later. But then, on the next day, when things, when more people came, and, and the young boys started walking with signs, I began to wonder and think, well, maybe they're not going to accept us like I thought they were. And um, on Wednesday morning, I almost tried to go back home because there were so many people and they looked so mean. They, they looked like they just wanted to grab us and throw us out. They didn't want us at all. I could just see the hate in their hearts. And when we got inside the school, most of the children were very nice to us. And then there were some, you could tell that they didn't want us there. They really showed it in a big way. They um, put signs on our lockers and told us to get out, and they uh, threw paper at us, and they shoved us in the halls, and they shoot, uh, threw chalk at us, and said all sorts of nasty things. And it just made me feel bad, and I couldn't concentrate at all on my lessons. So when Bobby graduated, he, he, he came into some conflict with, 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 our stu with his students down there. They cut the light off and hid him down there in the dark when he was trying to receive his diploma the night he was trying to get out of school. But he stuck it out. One of the uh, Citizens Council members had stationed himself with about three other men on a corner. As I made my way to that corner, they jumped me. I knew then that I had to do something. And it was at that time also that one man successfully held my arms down and allowed the number one uh, man of their gang to uh, land a pretty good blow upon my nose. Uh, I took a hold of the two fellows that led the attack one in one hand, one in the other, and shoved uh, each of them into the arms of a policeman, and from there they took them on over to the police station. I retreated into a doctor's office. Considerable damage done. There were three blasts going off about three minutes apart. One first one about 421 this morning, and another one about 424, and another one about 427. And of course, it's drunk from one end of the school building to the other end, and there is considerable... About 300,000, would you say, maybe? Well, I'm not in a position to estimate that, Bob. I don't know. Right. Uh, it's, it's a whole lot of damage, though, that's been done here. Now, I don't... I couldn't... I'm not in a position to say how, what right. percentage of the cost of the damage is, but uh, it is a considerable lot of damage on all ends of the building. Uh, there's timber blown through the roofs, and glass blown out, and one of the floors blown clear through, and this whole rest of the room here behind us, of course, it's blown completely out. So I don't know, Bob, just what the extent of this damage is just yet. I mean, sure, we had the high school blown up in 1958, but the community just took that right in stride. They found an abandoned elementary school in Oak Ridge and uh, had to furnish it, equip it, clean it, paint it. And all that got done in three days, and the kids were back in school. So the bombing, as horrible as it was, was hardly even a blip in the ongoing success of desegregation.
we, we stayed it through. We, we wasn't going nowhere. We was going to stay to the end. That's what we did.